After the Panthers traded away Brian Burns and watched Etor Gosmatos walk in free agency, it was obvious that edge rusher was a need. But now that they've added Jadavion Clowney, DJ Woonham, and Caleb on chase on, is edge a need at all entering the draft next week? We'll break it all down right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian. Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, I'm right here on the show answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me over on Twitter at Julian Council to get your questions in for this week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We are eight days away from the beginning of the 2024 NFL draft next Thursday in Detroit, Michigan. The Panthers not slated to be on the clock until day two, pick 33, but I still am so ready to finally get to that point in the draft calendar where we are finally on the clock and know what the Panthers are going to do. And over the last week and a half, we spent time on the show talking about the Panthers' needs at center, at corner, at tight end, at linebacker. We have sat on the show and discuss what the Panthers should do, what the outlook is, and who are the players that could elevate this 2-15 and 15 roster into a roster that maybe is competitive this upcoming fall in the NFC South and across the rest of the NFL. So on today's show, let's look at the edge rusher group and whether the Panthers should still, and I say still, just looking at what the Panthers did during free agency, I'm wondering if they should still be interested in adding an edge rusher. And my opinion on this has changed over the last couple of weeks. That's what happens during the draft cycle. You sit here, you talk about it every single day, the same topic about the same team, and you'd start to change your mind on what you think the priorities are and also what you would like to see the team do. And that has happened to me once again here on the show over the last couple of weeks. So let's talk about edge rushers. It was very clear after the Panthers traded away Brian Burns and watch Etor Gosmatos walk in free agency that this was a massive need, quite possibly the biggest need on the roster. And I know what you're thinking. How could edge rusher ever be more important than offensive line and especially wide receiver? If you go back to that Monday night when the Panthers, in fact, traded away Brian Burns, it was kind of a bad situation. They had already brought in Robert Hunt, which is great. They watched Frankie Louvu leave, and then they traded away Brian. And that was a decision that I still hate that the Panthers made, but it made sense as far as the team. They needed to move on. They understood that that relationship was fractured, that they were never going to give him what he wanted. There was a team out there in the Giants that were willing to give Brian Burns what he wanted, and he's gotten it. And good for Brian and good for New York and, I guess, good for Carolina to get something. Certainly, it will always be disappointing for a player who was successful here, two-time Pro Bowler, a captain, someone respected in this locker room. It will always be disappointing that the Panthers could not make it work in that, especially if you're going to move on from him, that they didn't get what the Rams were offering, the two first-round picks and a day two pick a year and a half ago. But that didn't happen. And Dan Morgan, understanding, was within the organization at that point in time. No, he was not the main decision-maker, but he was someone who was on board with passing on that Rams offer. So he's not necessarily absolved of all the blame. And I wouldn't put all the blame on him anyways, but I do think he did a good job of getting what he could get. And it always sucks to say they got what they could get, from a player who's 25 entering in his prime already has 46 sacks in five seasons and is a two-time pro bowler and the exact kind of player you would want to keep around in sign to big money, much like Derek Brown. 
But that's not what happened. The Panthers got a second round pick, picks 39. They also got a fifth round pick swap this year and a fifth rounder next year. So you're happy about that. Gross Modest is a player who didn't do a lot in his career in Carolina until last season where he was a pleasant surprise in a scheme where a lot of us and yours truly included thought that he wasn't going to be a fit in a Gerald Averro scheme. Turned out that he actually was a fairly decent fit, and he was someone the Panthers wanted to keep. Now, did they want to sign him to the $18 million that the 49ers potentially are going to give him? I don't know. We did see Frankie Louvu take less to go to Washington, and it's possible that Gross Bottles looked at the situation in San Francisco. I don't know, a team that just gone to the Super Bowl and felt like that was a better position for him to be in than here in Carolina, likely not competing for anything again in 2024. And it ain't like he's getting any younger. So Edge was a big need, but the Panthers, I felt like, did about as good as you could have hoped when it comes to that position. And I had similar feelings last year when it came to wide receiver. Wasn't a great wide receiver market last offseason after they traded away uh, DJ Moore, another trade as far as the player that went away that I didn't like and left a major hole in that position group. I don't know why the Panthers keep doing that. Maybe stop trading away your first round picks. The good thing is they've re-signed Derek Brown. He's here for now, but maybe stop trading away successful players and leaving a massive hole on your roster and then trying to fill it through free agency when the best way to build your roster is through the draft, which is something that Dan Morgan has now said to us this off season. But, to digress, the Panthers went out there and they brought in Jadavion Clowney on a two-year $20 million contract, $12 million in guarantees, $8 million signing bonus. You look at 2025, uh, his cap number is $14 million. He has $6 million in dead money if the Panthers want to cut him next offseason, $8 million in savings that they want to cut him next offseason. So he's at least here for this season. If he goes out there, plays 17 games, and as he said, he will be a Pro Bowler if he plays a full season – and has another nine and a half sack, potentially double digit sack season. That is money well spent by the Carolina Panthers for a player who has been fairly mercurial during his career. He's been up, he's been down. And the hope is that in the last couple of years in his career here in Carolina, he stays going up and can help turn around this team, especially a team that was dead last in sacks last year, was one of the worst teams in pressure rate and in quarterback hits, quarterback hurries, knockdowns, you name it. The Panthers were in the cellar of the NFL when it came to getting after the passer last year, and that was with Burns, who's no longer here in Carolina. Now, DJ Wonham, another player who is ascending, like the Panthers try to bring in a lot of guys on team-friendly deals, but yet still playing to pay the player a decent amount of money if they are successful, but deals they can get out of after a year, but deals are giving to players who are coming right out of their rookie deal. We've seen one of them have eight sacks in two different seasons, including last year in 2023, playing opposite of Daniel Hunter in Minnesota. Looking at his deal, it's only two years, $12.5 million, and of that, only $1.25 million of it is fully guaranteed, and that's his signing bonus. Nothing else is guaranteed. So the Panthers, they want to, they can get rid of one of them after this season if he does not play well. He has an 8.125 cap hit next offseason. The dead money to cut him would be $625,000. That's nothing. According to the uh, salary cap, the savings will be $7.5 million. They could save a combined $15.5 million if their two projected starting edge rushers this season don't live up to whatever the hype is, at least whatever the expectations they have. And the expectations, I think, are that they're going to be solid starters, and they're going to help raise the floor. I don't even know if you can say that after losing Burns from last year, but they're going to help get this group in the right direction, hopefully moving forward as this is, again, a rebuild in Carolina. And they took a flyer on Caleb on Chason, who Todd Walsh, the defensive line coach, knows back to his time being in Jacksonville as the Jags DC, the year when they drafted Caleb on Chason, 20th overall out of LSU. He has been a bust so far. The hope is in this scheme with a familiar coach, he'll get back to, well, he'll finally get to doing what the Jags and a lot of NFL teams, I'm sure, felt like he was going to do once he got into the league. So looking at those three and the roles that they're going to have, Clowney and Wunham as starters, Chase on as a rotational piece, along with DJ Johnson and maybe Amari Barno and Eku Leota, depends on how this coaching staff thinks about them in Again, the same defensive coaching staff from last year is here, so it's important to recognize when evaluating these players that if they liked them last year, 
I'm guessing they're probably going to like him still this year, unless there's some other players out there that are better and can help this team win more than two games this upcoming season. It wasn't really all the defense's fault. As we know, the offense was putrid. The defense could have been better at certain points of times, but the defense overall was solid and that they've had to rebuild that unit in the image of a lot of players who played under Rogero Vero at some point in time, or at least know him and are familiar with this scheme. And that goes with the edge rushing group. So Clowney's here, Willem's here, Chason's here, and a couple of guys from last year are also here. So with those additions, is edge even a priority? Heading into the draft next week, we'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find qualified candidates that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right candidates for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. In fact, 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Taking a look at the current edge rushers on the Panthers roster, Jadavion Clowney, and I, I keep getting it wrong. It's Jadavion Clowney. That's going to really be something I got to work on. Jadavion Clowney's here. DJ Warnham, Caleb on Chase on Eku Leota, the undrafted free agent last year out of Auburn. DJ Johnson, who they traded up from 93 to 80 in the third round to get with the Pittsburgh Steelers trade there. He's back, and so is Amari Barno. So with that six them, if that's the right term with those six players back, plus some other guys I'm sure are also here on the roster. Is edge even a priority or a need at all heading into the draft next week in Detroit? Like seriously, is that something that you still want to see the Panthers address for me when it had been two weeks now, all these days blend together doing this daily podcast with y'all. And thank you so much for listening and watching wherever you are across the world. And we are global. I, I can see where some people are. Hey, what's going on, Nairobi, Kenya? Um, but looking at that, I felt like at the beginning, wide receiver, they needed to get an edge rusher, and I want to say they needed a corner. Those were the top three primary needs for me. Then secondary needs were center, it was tight end, it was linebacker. I even mentioned that, hey, I wouldn't even mind if they went out there and got a defensive tackle and or safety. There were different positions that I felt like were more important at the time than I feel like are now. Now looking at it, eight days away from the beginning of the draft, nine days away from the Panthers actually being on the clock, wide receiver is still my top need. And from all the reporting that's out there, the Panthers are still going to be aggressive in getting a wide receiver. Every single mock draft I feel like I see, and that's not every one of them, but the vast majority of mock drafts I've seen so far, and those typically from the people from the major networks like ESPN or NFL Network, that's source material. They're not just saying that. It's because of the sources they've spoken to about what the team is likely to do in that situation and also just using, you know, conventional wisdom, their brains, and understanding what the team needs are. Wide receiver is the most popular pick for the Panthers at 33. Or if they trade back at 39, that's what teams are thinking the Panthers are going to do. That's what all the professionals out there are thinking the Panthers are going to do. So wide receiver to me is still the number one need. I am not comfortable with it only being Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, and Jonathan Mingo, and Terrace Marshall Jr. I need more. I need more if I'm the Carolina Panthers. I need more for Bryce Young. I'm not comfortable with that just being the wide receiver core in Carolina. Go get someone young. Go get someone who can come in and be an instant impact player, unlike Mingo was last year. Now, Brad Idzik, who was the Panthers' offensive coordinator, he was speaking to the media on Tuesday about how they really need to get this down to the studs and really work and work on all those guys' uh, skills and get them to play at a higher level moving forward. And that's great to hear and something that I felt like would be possible 
with this offensive coaching staff that has so many play, so many coaches that have a background working with wide receivers. Now, center, that's now become my second need, especially seeing that a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, who I felt like was clearly going to be a day one pick, potentially could be available there in the second round. And if he is, I want to see him chosen, knowing that Austin Corbett's never played center in the NFL in a regular season game, that it's only been in practice time, in shorts, in a T-shirt in April and May when he's played the center position, and he's coming off of back-to-back knee surgeries, and he's an aging player. I want to go out there and get a player who can be the center for the next decade. I want another Ryan Khalil here in Carolina. And where did Ryan Khalil come from? USC, and he came in the second round. So why not go out there and do it after watching Paradis not work out, Elfly not work out, Bozeman work, then not work, and now just trying to see if Austin Corbett's going to stick. I'm not super sure about that corner. I feel like it's a big need for the Panthers. Of course, JC has not stayed healthy. We talked about this on yesterday's show, Dane Jackson. And I was looking at um, Joe Person from The Athletic. I was looking at his latest depth chart, and he didn't have Dane Johnson, or Jackson rather, up there as a starter right now. So the Panthers can be going to get a starter, whether it be in the second or third round, day two of the NFL draft at corner, then tight end, as we know, the worst position group on the roster, Trimble, tr- Trimble Hive. I'm sorry. I don't believe your boy is a tight end one. Tight end two could be a good player. We'd like to keep him around. They need to find somebody who can actually be a high level, even just a mid-level, because I don't think that's what Trimble can be. Pass catcher at the tight end position and to bring back the tight end into the passing game here offensively for Carolina. So wide receiver, center, corner, tight end. I look at those all being more important right now as far as what their impact could be. If you get a wide receiver, he's probably going to play next year. You get a center, he's going to come in and compete. And if it's Jackson Powers Johnson or Zach Frazier, hell, maybe Grant Barton falls back there. Those guys might beat out Corbett. And the best thing for the team would be for them to beat out Corbett and to move on with the future. Corner, that guy's going to play. Tight end, he's going to play. Edge, is he going to play? Like, that's my question. With Clowney and Wonham slated to be your starting edge rushers, DJ Johnson, who was a favorite of a Jero Averro last draft season, which is why he's a Carolina Panther in the first place, with those three guys back and you added a former first-round pick who maybe can finally have it click, and you have Bardo, you have Eku Leota, who this coaching staff liked last year, how much run is this dude even going to get? Are you just wasting it? I'm not going to say you're wasting, but are you just using a draft pick on a player who's just going to be a rotational guy this year and maybe beyond? Or are you using a player who's actually going to be an impact player? Because if it's going to be an impact player right away, then yeah, go out there and do it. And and you would probably think the team is they're going to tell themselves that they want an impact player, that this guy's an impact player. But in their heart of hearts, they really believe that's the case. I think at wide receiver, they know what the roles are and what the possibilities are for that player. Same thing with center and corner and tight end. Looking at the depth chart right now, they whoever you bring in as an edge ain't coming here to start. At least that's not the plan. It could happen depending on the injury history of a player like Clowney and one of them coming off of his own injury they suffered last year. I'm just looking at this and I'm wondering, are any of the guys that are going to be available, top notch edge rushers that are going to take those guys' jobs? Or they just going to be rotational players? And if they're just rotational players, and that's your expectation for them this year, maybe even beyond. Is edge even a priority over those other four positions? I'm saying no, man. So if they don't get edge day two, that's probably not going to bother me. But I think we should still take a look at some day two prospects and try to figure out whether it makes sense for the Panthers to get one of those guys next Friday night. We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. We've all been there before, either as a player or as a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure if you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you got to dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank highs, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's a monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing the landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there. 
put on your game face and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play Store. While I don't think the Panthers should be prioritizing an edge rusher on night two, I still think that if they get one, that it probably makes sense to get one on eight on day two. And I would also imagine that if they want one, they're going to do it on day two. And it all depends as we've had the conversation here over the last couple of weeks. We've I've continued to tell you all this, that it depends on what their board looks like. Who's the best player available. And that's where the team wants to be. And looking at a lot of the things they did during free agency, in a way it's allowed them to go BPA best player available once they get on the clock at 33 and then at 39, 65, 101, 141, 142, I believe. I still got to look this up. 240 into seventh round, but at that point in time, whatever. That's just how I feel about seven round picks, y'all. So looking at edge rushers day two, that would be the time I would imagine they would want to go out there and get one. So the guys that we've spent a lot of time talking about whenever we've talked about edge rushers, whether it's been with Trevor Sikama or if it's been Jordan Reed or on the weekly Friday mailbag or just me bringing it up throughout the week, we talked about Chop Robinson out of Penn State, Darius Robinson out of Mizzou, Chris Braswell out of Alabama, Adisic Isaac out of Penn State, Braylon Trice out of Washington. My wonder with all five of these players, is any of them, a single one of them, an impact player from day one? Or are they just... Rotational guys. Now, looking at their breakdowns from the beast of the athletic, Dane Brugler wrote that. So I just want to read his summation from each of these players and kind of let you decide and also give you my perspective on whether that would make sense, as in he, that player, would make sense for the Carolina Panthers. So first off, looking at Chop Robinson, who Dane Brugler gives a first or second round grade to. You could see him go in the first round. You could see him go in the second round. I have seen recent mock drafts having Chop Robinson go in the first round. I've also seen mock drafts having go in the second round to the Carolina Panthers. Dan Brugger says Robinson needs to continue developing to prove he isn't a one-trick pony, but his first step explosiveness and aggressive hands give him the potential to be the most dynamic pass rusher in this class. He is ideally, ideally suited as a wide nine defender who can be schemed across the front. So I like that. I can play white nine on the outside there can be playing in different positions and has the potential to be the most dynamic pass rusher in the class. And some teams, maybe this team will have a first round grade on that player. And my expectation is if the Panthers have a first round grade on a player at 33, I think they're going to stay there and get that play. Like, I don't think they're going to take a guy early in the third round or second round rather who they don't have a first round grade for. Like, I don't think you're going to be like, Oh, second round, second round grade. We're going to take that guy. And, Every team has their board. They're going to put down the players who they feel like are first round type of players. That could be 45 players. It could be, it's going to be more, it could be more or less than the amount of first round picks that there are in actuality, which is 32, as we know. So the Panthers could look at it and they could see a player who's a first round pick that was maybe some 19th on their board who didn't go in the first round and decide at 33, hell yeah, we're taking that player. And maybe Chop Robinson is one of those guys. Darius Robinson out of Mizzou. This is what Dan Brugler had to say about him, saying Robinson is straight out of central casting with his frame, length, and power at contact, but he needs to introduce better skill and efficiency to his game for quicker sheds versus NFL blocking. He projects as a base in in either an odd or even front who can shift inside in some packages. So I like that also. Darius Robinson is someone who could be versatile potentially in this scheme. As the Vero said that they are a three, four base, but that's not what they're always going to run. And we saw that last year in year one, things are going to change a little bit as this coaching staff is more familiar with the players, players who are either new or coming back more familiar with the scheme and him. And they're going to try to bring in some new wrinkles and Darius Robinson could be a part of those new wrinkles. If he comes in here and you always love a guy who has the look, the frame, the length, the power at contact. He had eight and a half sacks last year for a Mizzou team that was outstanding in the SEC, winning 11 games, beating Ohio State in the bowl game as well. Chris Braswell from Alabama. Dean Brugler says Braswell is slightly undersized and still a work in progress in several areas, but his first step quickness and ability to convert speed to power are solid starting points for a developmental pass rusher. He has down the road starting potential and reminds me of the Cincinnati Bengals Joseph Osai when he was coming out of Texas. Now, I don't know how much I love the idea of a developmental pass rusher. In theory, all these guys are going to be developmental pass rushers, but how much development does Chris Braswell need? How long is it going to take him? You see him as a down the line starter and, that's not a bad thing, considering right now your two starters, Wanham and Clowney, are on two-year deals, and one they could get out of both those deals after the season. That could pave the way for Braswell to be a starter next year. 
Or are we waiting until 2026 for Braswell to be a starter? Does that make sense for the Panthers? Possibly. But I don't know how interested I am in using second or third round pick on a player who's a down the line starter. Adisa Isaac out of Penn State, whose teammate scores with Chop Robinson. Dan Brugger had to say this about him. Isaac needs to mature his approach to be more than a flash player, but with his length, energy, and athletic tools, he can become an impactful edge presence for a defensive coordinator who continues to unlock his potential. Though he projects best standing up in a 3-4, he has something to offer any NFL scheme as a role player with starting upside, similar in ways to the Philadelphia Eagles, Josh Sweat. And Josh Sweat has been a really good player for the Eagles, and the Eagles have always been a team that highly value the defensive line and just stockpiling there. Wouldn't hate it. Now, Braylon Trice comes out of Washington. They had a great season last year. He was really good for them. Trice doesn't have exceptional edge speed or length, says Brugler, and needs to be more consistent in the run game, but his athletic urgency and violent play style will help translate his college disruption to the pros. He projects as a scheme-diverse rotational NFL in. I don't know if any of these guys truly are impact players right away, but if I wanted any of them, I think Darius Robinson of Mizzou is my guy. I heard a lot about him at the Combine. A lot about him at Senior Bowl week, which way more important than the Combine. And then just from watching him this past year at Mizzou, that would be my guy. And look, uh, Big Ten defenders, I, I have a bias where these offenses they play against are terrible. And that does not take away from the individual player, but the individual, but the units, though, collectively, it's hard to really think that they're that great. And I watched that second half where Michigan ran the ball every damn time on Penn State. And it's hard to take Robinson, that being Chop Robinson, and Adisa Isaac seriously when you let a team do that to you physically in the second half of a ball game. Now, Michigan wasn't as champs, went undefeated, and they did it to Braylon Trice in Washington, too. But come on, man. Darius Robinson, though, that's the guy, even though rather see wide receiver, center, corner, and tight end go before the Panthers even think about tight king and edge rusher. But, of course, their board could say, Let's get an edge rusher here at 33, 39, 65, or any of the picks they may trade up or back for on night two of the draft. But that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all, subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, I'm right here answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me to get those questions into me now. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole, as always and forever. Keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Thursday.